My name is Paul Offit. I'm talking to you today from the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. It's Wednesday, September 24th, 2025. What I want to talk about is something that was discussed at the September ACIP meeting or Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices meeting when they brought up the notion of delaying the hepatitis B vaccine birth dose. Now, they didn't make a decision. They will be making a decision in October, but I thought it would be of value to go through what should be part of that decision-making process. What are the facts about hepatitis B in childhood? So the hepatitis B vaccine was first available in 1982. At that time, it was given to all infants in the first day of life, the birth dose, whose mothers in the first trimester were screened as having hepatitis B or said another way being hepatitis B surface antigen positive in blood tests done in the first trimester. Now, the reason that we vaccinated all infants who were born to mothers who had hepatitis B is that if you contract hepatitis B in the first year of life, meaning less than 12 months of age, you have a 90% chance of going on to develop cirrhosis, which is chronic liver disease or liver cancer. If you contract hepatitis B as a child, four-year-old, five-year-old, you have a 25% chance of going on to develop cirrhosis or liver cancer as distinct from if you contract hepatitis B virus as an adult where you have a 5% chance of developing cirrhosis or liver cancer. So that's what they did. 1982, birth dose for every child born to a mother who was detected in the first trimester as having hepatitis B virus. It didn't really make much of a difference. And so in 1988, they decided to expand that recommendation to include not only uh, children who were born to mothers who were hepatitis B positive in that first trimester, but to any uh, racial group or ethnic group that had a high risk of hepatitis B. Again, not much difference. By 1991, it was discovered that about 30,000 children in this country every year were getting hepatitis B who were less than 10 years of age, less than 10. So at that time, the decision was made then to vaccinate everybody in the first day of life, birth dose with hepatitis B. Now, there were a few reasons for that decision. One is that, that although um, women are screened in the first trimester, um, there can be a false negative rate for that screening. In other words, that you can find that you don't have hepatitis B falsely, the so-called false negative rate, so you would be falsely reassured. Secondly, about 15% um, of mothers in this country who are pregnant don't get screened. So this provided a, a safety net. Third, um, you may, although tested in the first trimester, acquire hepatitis B virus in your second or third trimester. And fourth, what they found was that although 30,000 children, less than 10, were getting hepatitis B, only half were getting it from their mothers. The other half were getting, getting it from coming in contact with people who had chronic hepatitis B, most of whom didn't know it. And when you come in contact with someone who has chronic hepatitis B, you can acquire that virus, be infected by that virus after relatively casual contact. The reason is, is when you're chronically infected with hepatitis B, you have a large quantity of virus in your bloodstream. You have between 100 million to 10 billion infectious particles, infectious viruses. Um, in your bloodstream per milliliter. A milliliter is about a fifth of a teaspoon. So if you, if you come in contact with towels or washcloths or toothbrushes or nail clippers or uh, razors with someone who had hepatitis B, you may not even see the blood because it's such a small amount that's necessary or, or could possibly infect you. Also, it should be noted that hepatitis B virus can live for up to a week on surfaces. So with that, knowing that, that half of these children were getting hepatitis B less than 10 years of age from coming in contact with uh, people who had chronic hepatitis B and knowing that even today about 2 million people in this country have chronic hepatitis B, many of whom don't know it, we had a, a birth dose recommendation for everybody in this country. And with that, we virtually eliminated hepatitis B in children in this country. Now the ACIP is considering extending that to one month of age, two months of age, three months of age. And what the reason that they give is they say, well, look at other countries. There are other developed world countries that delay it till two or three months of age. 
But those other countries aren't like our countries for a few reasons. One is that, one, we have a high instance of hepatitis B in this country. There's at least 2 million people who are chronically infected. And two, and most importantly, those countries, those developed world countries have national health systems. So our rate of uh, not testing women in the first trimester, which is about 15%, is much higher than any other developed world country. So we have a safety net in this country because we need it. And I think that to delay, to delay that birth dose beyond, um, say, two months or three months of age would be a mistake and would put children at risk unnecessarily. Right now, we're jumping with the net. If we do what the ACIP may do, which is delay that birth dose, then we would be jumping without a net. 